Alatu, welcome to Ireland Unfiltered. Hi, thank you for having me, Jim. It's great to have you here. Um, I want to ask you first, when did you first think you could become a writer? I don't, I, I, I don't think I ever actually thought I would become, like it would be something serious. It's, it's never been something that I, I still call my, probably now I could call myself a writer yeah. because there's a book there. Um, but it's, no, I, I would say that it was when the book got published. When this, yes, this yes, that I, yeah, yeah, all the other times it was just something that I, I would say that I dabbled. Right. In, yes, uh, um, as opposed to actually thinking myself and accepting that I'm a writer. Yeah. But was it something, when did, did, was it something that you dabbled in for a long time? Or when did you start? I started when I was in direct provision, mm. you know, and um, I could remember, I, I can actually remember very clearly having this conversation with a friend of mine who was working in the, in the accommodation center where I was mm. at the time. And I said to her that I have all these stories because there was just so many good things, not like good things, but like good stories yeah. that could make a great story happening around me. And I thought, oh gosh, I have these stories running around. I don't know what to do with them. And she said, write it down. And mm. she just said it flippantly like that. And I thought, I should have even, you know, known that. So I started kind of writing it down slowly. And I remember the first story that I finished, I showed it to her and and, um, and she, probably because I said that to her, she found, it's just how things happen. And she found this um, um, thing for, it, it was an act, active link, I think it was, about um, a writing um, competition. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, you could go in for this, you know, because they were looking for migrant voices, I think it mm. was. And she, she said, oh, you could put it there. And I, I remember staying up just to finish that. I, I wanted to write two stories, but I didn't get, you know, to both of them finished. Mm. Uh, I complete them to, to the best of my ability. And then I showed it and she loved one and I sent it off. And that would eventually uh, won the competition. But I think that was just how slowly I started thinking, mm. oh, you know, like I need to polish up my writing, but not because I wanted, I was calling myself a writer, but just because it was something I was enjoying. Like I, I had so many things I wanted to put down on paper mm. and you know, that was just it. So we might jump back a bit because you mm. said there, you it started when you were in direct provision. Mm -hmm. You were born in Nigeria, Nigeria yes. in uh, Enugu. Is, is yes, that? Enugu, that's the Eastern part of Nigeria. Yeah. Yes. Now I've seen the, it written the that- The Biafra that you know. Right. <laughs> well, I've seen it written that it was, a, uh, you've described as, a, as a, a small town in Nigeria, but it's mm. about what, 700,000 people according yeah, to- Yeah, it would be like, uh, we would call it a small town in Nigeria, <laughs> okay. but you would call yeah. it a large town yeah, here, yeah. Yeah, but it's a small place, you yeah. know, uh, back in Nigeria it would be, you know, and it's quite, um, it's a very kind. Of, I, I don't know what town I would use to compare it to in Ireland because I've not been to a lot of places. Mm. But it would be what you would call the countryside, very, very kind of like uh, laid back and okay. you know those kind of people and all of that. So that would be yeah my town. And you grew up, did you have many brothers and sisters? I do. Ha I come from a polygamous family. Right, and okay. that means that my father has a lot of, um, you know, not a lot, but he has three wives. Okay. And so I would have quite um, a good number of siblings, yeah. yes. And when you were growing up, were you, like, did, did you, like, how, did you, you did a degree in, in Nigeria, did you? Yes, I did a degree in Nigeria. I did a degree in, uh, I went, I got to go to school and I did a degree in um, um, English literature. And that was just because what I wanted to study or what I loved, you know, as a child, you have all these dreams and you say, okay, I would like to do something like this or do that. But uh, I wanted to study law, but the university I got to go to, they don't have um, a law, um, um, they don't have law, they mm. don't, there's no law degree over there. So the next best thing was just to do English and that was what I ended up um, um, studying. Mm. And, um, and I suppose that that's where the, the love for literature was, but I've always liked literature anyway, mm. but that's where it was ignited more. And was that, where did that love come from? Did your mother, tell stories was there a storytelling like i saw you somewhere you said that um, yeah my mom yeah, she 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 would be a good um, well i don't know if her story because she would be someone that would tell us till you know those kind of tales uh, you know like um, you know when the tortoise went to you know those right. kind of things. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, was yeah. very good at things like that you know stories about that always has a moral ending and mm. you know she would be someone who would tell those kind of um stories but I don't know where, I think it was just probably the things that I, I was reading in school because there were so many things happening at home as well. Right. That, you know, so 
I, I was talking to a friend of mine recently and she said, and, and she said this, this is someone that I would have known for a very long time and we kind of reconnected just quite recently, mm. when I mean recently, like a couple of weeks ago or something, yeah. and she was saying to me, she said, you've always seemed wise, you know, <laughs> and, and she yeah. made that comment, and I said, you've always seemed wise, and you've always acted older than your age, and I said, mm. and I thought about it after we, you know, we, the, the conversation, mm. I said, where did that come from, you know, and probably, and that was just probably influenced by my surrounded about things that were happening at home and all mm. of that so you kind of you're much more self-aware so I, I would remember going off to school when I was in school and I was studying African women literature mm. and you know just kind of hearing story you know like I, I remember there was a lady um, she's Egyptian and Nawa El Zadawi and we read her books and there was mm. a particular book of hers Women at Point Zero Mm. And there was so much that had happened to the woman, so much, you know, like a lot of uh, domestic violence and all of that. So that kind of, it was almost like at that young age, I was familiar with a lot of things that were, were happening in the story. And that stayed with me, you know. So I think that I have always been kind of self-aware in a way mm. that other people around me, when they were young and they were like, I, I had that, even though I was young, even though things mm. were in, 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 um, in a general outlook, very good and all of that. Mm. But there were just so many things. You know, as a child in a family, you always know the things that happen in your family that other people do not are not aware of. Yeah. So that would be that would be me. And so you, know, you mean the things? Those things were the things that gave you a kind of a, a wisdom. You think? I would say so. I would say so. You know, I, yeah, I would say so. I would say that I've always, you know, there's always been that kind of like I've. From a, from a young age, I've always had that sense of, like, I have to survive, you know, mm. that kind of survival thing. So it's just been there. You and know. what was happening at home that you had that I sense? Can't, <laughs> you can't, you, yeah. Sorry, that's not even up to, you know, like, uh, just just stuff. And, you, you know, it, it might be things that people take for granted. But for me, you know, just mm. uh, I've always had that sense of I just wanted something different. You know, I just wanted... Uh, a, you know, a different life. Right. And that, I don't know if what I have is different or is even worse, but, you know, I've always yeah. had, you know, that sense. That so that was always propelling you? Oh, yes, sure, definitely. And did you feel different to people, you know, children your own age because of that? Um, in some sense, like, I, 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 I feel that uh, I have a... What I want out of life is always, usually when I'm with people, I find that it's rare that I find people who want the same things out of life mm. that I do have. I, I do want, you know, mm. usually people have, want, you know, different, but it's, 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 it's rare that I'm with um, people who I would say like uh, friends or something, or people mm. of the same age with me, and I find people who actually... Uh, thinking the same way, and you know? so I've always felt like the outsider in, in a sense, mm. you know, even amongst people that are my peers. Not because I, they don't want, or they, they, they might be more successful, they might, you know, mm. but for some reason I feel a bit kind of like a, a bit on the outside. I'm always and is that because you're, you're observing or you're a writer and that's a sort of a natural position for a writer to be slightly detached? I've never analyzed it that probably yeah. that might be so, you know, I, I, I've always. Um, felt that it, it could be that there's a, a bit of me that's always observing what is mm. going on. And I find that I always actually take note of things the way that other people do not. Mm. You know, I could have this conversation with you mm. now, and as I leave here, I would analyze every okay. single word. You know, your movement of your eye, okay. who walked, you know, like <laughs> this would play in my right. head. Like, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, like I have that kind of, like I take uh, reflective practice to mm. a whole new level you know right. that's just and I, I can't seem to you know sh kind of silence close it that, or yeah. silence that voice it's always been there in me and it's always you've always had that yeah well I, I became aware of it you mm. know I, I became conscious I probably would have but it's just something that I've realized that I have that I'm mm. very quite conscious of things like that that and that's a gift to have as a writer but it might make life itself a bit more oh, difficult. Oh, yeah, it, it does. It makes things, because you always stand away from things, because you're yeah. always observing. It makes you not know, take part in a lot of things, like almost just kind of like let go and take mm. part in things, mm. you know. I, I find that very difficult. And when you say you're, you know, people will want different things to you, what would they, like, what would you want that you would think would be different to other people? Ah, that's a very interesting question, because probably the things I want would be the same with other people. But there are things that I find very, very... Uh, that I, I find that, you know, okay, let's even talk in terms of, I, I know that so many people would want um, the things I value. I, mm. I value people who respect other people, mm. people who are kind to other people, mm. you know, 
there are things like that that I don't I don't place any value to. Mm. You know, other people might value someone who has uh, who has things, mm. who is doing well. Yeah. You know, who is at the top of their game. Mm. But those are not the things that I like. I, I come in and I, I want someone like I, I want to see someone. I, I want to see someone who has a almost like a pure spirit. You mm. know, those are the things that attract me in mm. people. Mm. You know, it's not all the other things. I I don't really care yeah. about all the other things, and I and I find it. Ray, oh, I find it hard to find people who actually pick those things in people because every other person is obsessed, you know, from where I am, you know, I probably uh, every other person would say, oh, that's what I value in people. But I find that rarely that that is the case. You know, people might say it, but they don't really, you know, when you really dig down, you find out that that's not really what they value. Mm -hmm. You know, they value other things, you know. So, yeah, that would be um, things that I would say that I, I value. And talk a bit, if you can, I know... Like you, you, you came to Ireland in two thousand and six. What was it that? When did you decide that you had to leave Nigeria? I don't know if it was a. Uh, there were so many things that happened that you know made that decision for me, and I don't know if that was a decision that I consciously made. I think mm. it was just like a. Um, it was almost like a something just happened. You know, almost mm. like you don't have any will in a situation, which mm. are things that you just kind of, you know things happened because yeah. they had to, it wasn't a conscious decision that I sat and I said, oh, I'm going to travel to Ireland tomorrow mm. and I made this plan and all of that. That was not the case at all. It was just decisions where, not that they were made for me, but things made it mm. to happen. And then you suddenly, you know, kind of find yourself in a particular situation. That and way. that was when you were, so, and then you were coming to Ireland. Yes, that was when I came to Ireland. And you had a young daughter at that stage, is that? No, actually, no. Um, she had not been born. She had not she been born. Yes. Okay. I know that that has been, in, you know, kind of mixed um, uh, up a little bit in that, but I, I don't even bother with, you know, correct. kind of correct because right. it's we just it's not important, now. you yeah. know. So, um, yeah, she was born here. She was born here. So, when you, did you, can't, like, because people, a lot of people are uh, still don't understand how, you know, asylum seeking works and direct provision works and these kind of things. So, you came to Ireland that your intention was to come to Ireland. But did you know about the direct provision system? Did you know what, what was facing you when you got here? Oh, I did not know about the direct provision um, system. You know, I can only speak for myself. Mm. I can't speak for any other person. I did not know about the direct provision system. But then I found that that, you know, that was how you know, to yeah. talk about things in Ireland, that that's, you know, almost like things were explained to you as it goes on. Mm -hmm. And one thing, you know, like everybody says, oh, you're always very hazy about this particular discussion and all that, because I don't, it's not for me to, um, I think if people want to know about direct provision, there's so many ways they can yeah, know that they yeah. can read up on that. And if they want to talk about, um, uh, if they're looking for probably, I, I find it a very private story to share mm. in that sense. You know, and um, just because I've read a book does not mean that I, you know, I must have to share that yeah. kind of story. And yeah. I feel like that's just not, um, it's not, it's just something that I said, it's not like I have control over that and I'm not even um, mm. yeah, going. So like, as you said that, you said that, you know, everything you, we can learn about you is in, is in your <laughs> stories and reading your book, there is an awful, because there's like, the, there is, there is Nigeria, there is life in direct provision and there is life outside direct provision. I think every writer, and just to be um, clear, you know, those three stories are not just my only story. I know, I know, I know that, no, I know. So yeah. it's, yeah, uh, and um, I, I think every writer has a bit of themselves. In yeah. they, no, it doesn't matter what the story is about. There's always something about you that yeah. you put in there, you yeah. know. Um, so, and that's just what I, I, I meant by that. Yeah. And it just does not mean that all of the, you know, uh, what happened there is, you know, like they're, they're all fictional. Mm. It doesn't mean that it's it's me that's in mm. the story, and that's just what I meant by that, yeah, yeah. you know. So, um, <clears throat> but for you, like, and it's not. I, I take I take your point about people. There are lots of ways for people to find out about direct provision. But your experience in direct provision, I'm interested in, like, how, you know, what that was like to kind of adapt to. I, I, you know, my coming to direct provision, it wasn't that as from get-go, it was horrible. Mm. Like I had, you know, a good few good years yeah, <laughs> of, of right. living in direct provision. I was, I was happy, you know, mm. and um, yeah, and I made good friends, just like I mentioned. I mentioned mm. someone that, you know, was very, you know, very kind to me when I moved in. And, you know, the, the, the accommodation um, hostel where I was, was very, you know, they were very good and all of that. 
But I think that it got to a point, like I said, eight and a half years yeah. in the system. But it got to a point where things started to change, mm. you know, almost. You know, so many things were happening. And, you know, like in life, direct provision has always had these ups and downs. That were At the time we arrived, um, there were people who were... Um, you know, people would probably get you make friends with someone, they'll probably get their residency or, you know, they mm. would leave or something would happen and then they move and, you know, so you find yourself always kind of remaking or starting up mm. again. And uh, I remember like um, the, the, one of the, my good friends who was a staff at the center at the time, she had to leave and um, she she had to leave. She got a different job, and it was almost like a loss as well because she had always been my anchor. Yeah. And then I had a, a friend, a very good friend, who was in direct provision with me, and she was deported. Right. And then I had, uh, and I lost a sister at that point. I had I lost my elder sister back in Nigeria at the time. Mm. So it was just like all of these almost like yeah. tragedies yeah. were yeah. happening yeah. at the same time. And I I think, you know, getting out of that almost, you know. I would remember, I think I went into, when I, this was like maybe five, six years into my staying direct profession, I went into, or even maybe much more than that, I went into um, one of the places, an office place, I wanted to use a computer there. Mm. And uh, there was a, a lady in charge of it and I told, I said, could I come and use your computer? I don't know what I wanted to use the computer for, something mm. like that. And then I had, you know, while I was there, the manager, of the center walked in, mm. you know, and there was just this kind of like, even the way the lady allowed me to use the computer, like it was just, there was just something different about it, like almost like a watchfulness, you know, yeah. like, like the manager was there, there was no, you know, he didn't call the woman outside to talk, you know, they were just kind of hovering around me, mm. you know, that kind of way. So I thought, there's something odd about this, you know? So I, I couldn't, you know, I finished what I was doing mm. and I left and I was just thinking that was just odd, you know? So I think, this was just, I think all of those things started happening and I started becoming aware that there's a, 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 a almost like a, a, a different side mm. to the the system that yeah. I was not aware of all of this, well, probably because I had, you know, I had a very good friend that I, I you mm. know, I had somebody, one of the staff there that I could go out with and all of that. So almost I became aware of this different side of... of and what was of, that about, do you think, that incident? I don't know. I, I, that's a good question. Mm. Those are the things that, you know, you, you kind of find people following you behind, you know, all of mm. those kind of stuff, and you just wonder, what is this about, you know, why this? And, you know, the sad part of it is that, even though it's happening, it's it's not happening with new people. It's not happening with they're not. These are people that you've known for the number of years mm. you've been in direct profession. So it's almost like a ch there's a change in relationship, and you're wondering why yeah. why why this change? What what God? Mm. What is it about me that has brought on this change? You know. So all of those questions are there, and and to be honest, I don't have answers to them. I would love to have answers mm. to them, but you know. And for all that time, and you say you're like you know, how long did you? think you were going to be spending there initially? Because, you know, the, uh, people say they arrive and they're told six months or whatever. So uh, did you expect your case to be dealt with in a certain I period did, of time? I actually. I, I remember <coughs> I was having a conversation with a woman and she said to me, I think I just arrived at the time, and she said, oh, I've been in, um, in the system for two years. And I screamed, I said, two years? You know, what, you know, what in the world? And she kind of, <laughs> she held it against me because from time to time she would say, oh, you know, I remember when you described when I said I'd been here for two years, but I didn't understand why somebody would stay for two years, yeah. you know, and not kind of have any answer or have any response or, you know, mm -hmm. like what was what would keep somebody like that? You see, it, it, the, I, I think that probably the questions that people are asking me, I'm actually the wrong person mm. to be asked those questions, mm. you know, like why would you stay for two? Probably those are the questions that the authority yeah. or the, you know, justice, that, mm. that, that is for them to answer. I don't have answers to them, mm. you know, so. But I'm I interested in how it felt from your position that this, mm. this, I, this time frame that may have seemed shorter when you arrived, uh, like how that, what that does to you, what it does to your spirit, what it does to your mind, because you're spending this long period of time. Now, clearly, you found writing at, at some stage, and that became something to do. But, like, how you adapt to I've a always, kind of I've a always never kept ending. myself busy. Mm. Um, for myself, I've always kept myself busy. There were so many things that I was always trying to do, you know, doing um, things within the community. But 
I think the thing is what actually cripples people is the fact that after a while, you stay a year, when you leave a place for a year, two years, three years, it's harder to return. You just mm. don't return back. It's almost like it becomes more the fear. You know, yeah. there is something that people actually ignore. And that is that emotion called fear. Yeah. It's very, it cripples you. Mm. You know, you think probably the imaginings of what is there or what, you know, you're going back to is mm. always harder than, you know, people, you know, people underestimate it. Yeah. You know, that, that feeling of the unknown mm. of fear of where do I start again? Of, mm. oh, probably, you know, I don't have, this person is no longer there. You probably had a, a mother who died while mm. you were in direct provision or you have family who are no longer there and mm. then you think, where do I start from? So those are the things that I think that pe actually keep people for that long right. and they wait in the system for yeah. that long. So it's, I, I think that's, for everyone that I know, I would mm. say that that is the strongest emotion, you mm. know, and if you can, and some people left, some marriages broke up, mm. you know, some uh, some of the men would probably return back to their countries and say, mm. I can't leave, you know, like I don't like the, uh, you know, the indignity of the system and all of that. And then the women stay because the woman is thinking, oh, how do I adapt the children? Where do I move yeah. these children? For? You know, so all of those things come into play. So it's not, it's not something to be underplayed, the yeah. fact that, you know, someone, a, a year is a long time in someone's mm. life to just return back, yeah. you know, so that has to be, you know. And presumably that becomes greater than when you, like when you did get leave to remain then and you, you decide, you know, you're free to kind of work and work outside the system, outside direct provision and all those things, there is, that's accompanied by a great deal of fear about how you're going to survive there too. Oh, definitely. That, there is that. And uh, you kind of, um, it's, it's a whole different ball game. And, uh, you know, I, I think the most... Um, I think one of the things that we, uh, it's almost like we were telling ourselves a lie, you know, at the time was that if you get this residency or you get your whatever, you're going to life is going to be, you know, all dandy from mm. now on. And that's just not the, the case yeah. at all. You know, it's just, it's a whole new level of, of, um, of um, trying to navigate your way around mm. stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, it does, it, uh, there's that fear. I, I felt it, you know, when I got mm. mine, I didn't, I didn't know where to start, you know. It was yeah. like, uh, even though I had, you know, I'm, I'm educated, I'm actually on a better footing mm. than a lot of people, you know, but I still, I still felt that kind of fear. So everybody has their own. And sometimes, you know, like I, I, I notice that people always go, oh, uh, I don't know where this idea comes from that just because you're educated or something, you cannot be, you cannot seek asylum in a country. There's always mm, that kind of yeah. thing that is, is for the people who are, um, um, who poor people mm. or whatever. You can, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know where that mindset mm. came from, but it's just anyone can seek asylum for any different kind yeah. of reasons. Yeah. So it's not just for people who are not educated or something. It's like saying that um, domestic violence only happens to certain people. Mm. You know, it cannot happen to somebody who is a CEO in a company. It can't, mm. you know, these things happen. So you, uh, so I, I found it almost like everybody thought she would be okay. And I thought I'll be okay, you know, like, because I had always been okay. Mm. But then I found that I struggled as well. So. Um, a lot of things actually. So it's, it's something that you just have to navigate a lot. And I probably I'm, at this point, I'm actually feeling the after effect of it. Yeah. More so now that the book is out than at the time when, before the book was out, so. And why do you think that is? Because it's brought it up again? I suppose so. Um, I suppose so. I, I suppose that sometimes things make you vulnerable, mm. you know, and then even, you know, talking to people and having to analyze mm. almost like yeah. dissect your life yeah. each and every time, you know, and then, you know, there's this, and, and that's what, you know, makes me almost like I'm, I'm angry, yeah. you know, like I, I feel that, you know, a people, there's this thing that, this notion that people have about, oh, you have to respect somebody's privacy, and yet that is not, you know, mm. like you would want me to respect your privacy, mm. but then that is not reciprocated yeah. when it comes to me. So mm. one gives other people the right to feel that I have to throw my own, mm. my life story out for them to dissect and, 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 and read up and, you yeah. know, that when they keep this, you know, like, I, I feel that that's kind of like a... And you feel it's a kind of, a, it's another sort of indignity. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I do. I do. To be honest with you, I mm. do, you know, uh, and I, because I would, I, I would think that that would something that, okay, would be respected, you know, yeah. that would be something that people would know, okay, 
uh, you know, that I, I am actually a mother as well. Yeah. So to ask me those questions on mm. live, on TV, on, you know, mm. radio and all mm. of that, I have a child that I have to protect yeah. and that's not giving respect to me as a, as a person. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So it, it does, um, it does bring its own I set know. of annoyance, yeah, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, and does it, is there an anger at, at Ireland because of what you've had to, like, how you felt you've been asked to sort of survive here? I don't think that it's, um, I wouldn't have said that that was the case, but I find that, um, what I find about Irish people is very, is that there's a, almost like a, uh, uh, let me tell you, there's a scene in the in the in the book *This Host to Life*, mm. where the money, where the girl was trying to get honey from the, and then the manager mm. came and just kind of yeah. said, you know, said something, and that would be something that we're all familiar with, you know, where you have an issue or something, or there's a, mm. a there's a, a bit of misunderstanding with um, misunderstanding with someone mm. who is kind of like a, a, most of the staff were Irish at the time, and then whoever is the manager, the, you know, whatever authority there is, mm. would come in and just almost like not even want to hear the other side of the story and just make a judgment based on one side yeah. of a story. And that, and I thought, okay, this is just because it's direct provision. Mm. But I find that outside, like mm. within the communities, that that's the case. People make judgments based on what they hear, you yeah. know, from one side. They, they don't actually try to, you know, like almost hear the other side of the story or ask you, what is your, you know, mm. this person said that to me, what do you think about what, you know, explain yourself. Yeah. I never hear that. People just, you know, so I, I kind of like, take it as, in, as an Irish thing, as you know, per se, because it's, it's something that we would, in every court of law, you would hear both sides of the story because before mm. you make any judgment, you wouldn't mm. that be the case. But I find that that's not the case when it comes to Ireland. Uh, but it's not... Um, so you find you're trying to sort of figure out how to kind of read people's minds and things like this. Why do they respond like this? Why do they... Yeah, I, I, at first I try to kind of uh, read people's mind. Now I don't bother yeah. anymore. You know, like if, if I... It just... What I see is what I see, and yeah. I react to that, yeah. you know, so I don't, um, it's, it's almost like it's a, there's no point. Well, there's a line in, in one of the other stories under the awning where a character says, you had observed it was the way of things here, so people were made not to feel uncomfortable. So, like, is that something you, you feel like you have to make other, you, you feel that you have to make people feel less uncomfortable because you're imagining that there's some uncomfortableness ar around? Uh, well, that was, um, I like that, I like the word imagining, <laughs> yes, <laughs> probably that's, uh, that's, that, that would be the case in that story. Uh, for me, in real life, mm. I don't, you know, like I, I've, I've, I've shrugged it off, I don't, I don't bother anymore, you know, uh, if, if there is, uh, if someone is polite and kind to mm. me, I am polite and kind to them. Like mm. I don't, you know, like I don't extend myself in that way anymore. You know, yeah. like uh, uh, I, I find you, you, you spend a lot of your energy and time trying to get people to be much more open-minded and all of that. Mm. And, you know, like I, it's not something that can be stopped in a, in yeah. a day, something, you know, like the, if they're programmed that way, they're programmed that way already. So there's nothing, there's no point, I think, in, in mm. doing all of that. It doesn't mean that I'm going, you know, like uh, you, you come in, you come off being, uh, you're, you're uh, probably rude or anything, mm. but no, it's, 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 if people are, are nice and, uh, uh, you know, you just, you extend, you whatever warmth that is given out, you yeah. kind of, yeah, it's because, uh, as they say in my place, it's always uh, whatever the host, you know, a new bride can only only succeed in a, in, in her new home, you know, like mm. with, her, with the, 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 the man that she married, if the, if the mother-in-law opens up her arms to welcome her, you know, yeah. so you can only, you know, yeah. be as, as warm as your mother-in-law opens yeah. up, that, which in this case is, is Ireland, and, you know, that's it. But that is interesting because Ireland has, you know, there's been, you know, a huge history of emigration, uh, a shorter history of, of immigration. And I, I, like how Ireland adapts to that, I'm interested in your experience of that. Like the thing you've said, which I think is very interesting, that uh, it shouldn't be an us, there's a sort of an us first versus them, whereas it's actually us versus us. Are you talking as 
somebody who is who is it in Ireland who, who belongs in Ireland and anything you say or any any anything anybody says should be taken in that in that vein rather than a oh, criticism this, yeah, yeah. Our criticism from an outsider which I think Irish people sometimes have always been a bit sensitive about that somebody would would come in and kind of offer some sort of criticism they want to be told that it's a great country uh, do you know, I, I had a friend um, years back when I was, uh, I think I was uh, like, when, I think we were in secondary school, like senior secondary mm. school. And she was always, you know, like she would tell you, oh, that hair doesn't look good good mm. on you. You know, mm. you're put, you, know, you shouldn't have worn that or you sat this way or why were you talking like that when it chose, you know, that's kind of, mm. she was a very, uh, like I looked at her as a very critical person. Yeah. And then she went, I think when we finished the country school, she got, she got married, mm -hmm. you know, so she didn't continue with us. And, uh, and I realized all of a sudden that there was just people like that are rare, mm -hmm. you know, and they, you, f you actually realize that when you're looking, when you're searching, mm -hmm. because everybody around you will always tell you what you think, what you think you, they, what they think that you want here. Is, mm -hmm. this, is that shirt good on me? Oh, it's lovely. You, you know, even though it doesn't, you know, you, you, you've, those are, these are the people that you find everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So it's rare that you actually find someone who will say, that's not, I don't think that's, you know. And I realize now in life, I always think about, you know, think about, yeah, when I find people like that in my mm -hmm. life, I keep them. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I hold on to them. And I think that that's what Ireland does. When I said that, you know, I, I, it's not that, when I say things, I'm saying it because almost like I'm saying it to my own people. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't bother criticizing people that I don't know yeah, or yeah. people I don't like or people mm. I don't want to have anything to do with. You know, that's a waste of my time and yeah. energy. And I don't, I don't, I don't see it as a criticism. I'm just saying this, this is a way we can make it better. Yeah. And I'm open to someone telling me this is a way you can make your life better yeah. as well because that would make me, you know, a better person as well. And that's how I, I, I see it. You know, it's not just because I, I feel like, oh, you have to sit down and then who are you to do this and that and that. That's not the case. I, I just so it's coming from a place of love. Mm. This is how we can, this is, you know, my perception of how, you know, things could be done uh, differently to benefit us all, is not. And what would you say those ways are? What would you? I think that, you know, when I, when I talk, um, well, it depends on the context in which <laughs> I made that statement because there's so many things, you know, it depends on the context in mm. which I, I made the statement. But I think that people should be much more, uh, open mind. I, I don't see what all the, you know, when they say people are afraid, it's because we're afraid of them, we're afraid of this, and mm. we're afraid of that. I just think that that's, uh, that's just, you know, that's not true. You can't be, you know, I don't think it's, it's coming from a place of, I, I don't think racism is actually coming from a place of fear. You know, mm. I, I, I think that, you know, you know, when you say I, I did this to some, you know, I'm afraid that's why I had to do this and all of that. I think actually like if you do something, that's, there's no reason why direct provision should be there in the first mm. place, you know, because um, it's not necessary. I don't think it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that uh, there's so many things that are not actually... Uh, looked into that are happening, you know, that probably the stories are probably, as always, will come out in the next 10 years or 20 yeah. years or 30 or 50 years time, you know. There's so many people who complain of, you know, after, like I've heard, um, af after people leave direct provision, they'll, you know, they'll say, oh, I feel that somebody's watching me and all of this kind of stuff. Mm. It's just, that they'll say, oh, people put it down to living in direct provision. And you don't, we don't even know if that mm. is a, a case of, mm. you know, like, is that kind of like a, a um, um I, I hate to use the word mental illness or something mm. I don't like using that word but it's, it's, it would that be a situation that is because it might not be you know that is coming out of being in that kind of situation so mm. there's so many things that has to be you know the children as well who were who were teenagers while yeah. they went direct provision who knows you know in terms of their self-esteem how well they're doing that yeah. there's so many levels to it that has to be examined and I, I don't think that things should be I, I don't know what reason or why there was direct provision mm. in the first place. I, I have no answer for that, but I don't think there's any reason for it to just still be there. Like, that seems to be one of the things that is most worrying and brutal about the system, about the children spending long times there and, you know, share, I don't know, you know, sharing bathrooms. I've read stories of people not wanting their, to send their kids out to the bathroom in the night so they, they'll use a bucket in their own rooms, this kind of, and for, for that to go on month, month after month, year after year in people's lives, seems like a, a huge amount of damage that is being caused in, in, in a, 
And you know, people talk about direct provision as something that Ireland will eventually have to apologise for. And again, like the other things that Ireland has apologised for, like mother and baby homes and these kind of things, they were going around. There were people in, were aware of them at the time. It seems like it's it's almost too much to say we will have to apologise for this in the future. <laughs> Let's do something about it now and change the system right now because everyone, like people, as you say, there's no reason not to be aware of it right now. I don't know if uh, you know, like. Uh I have no answer as to why mm. it, the situation is still the mm. way it is or why even, you know, there was even that kind of uh, um, thinking towards it, you know. And uh, But then it's not just Ireland, though, mm. you know. Uh, the, the good thing about Ireland is that they are... What, what, you know, that which is not just a good thing, a great thing is that they're always willing to listen and to do something mm. about to, to right wrong, yeah. you know. Um, there's so many other countries that are doing the same. If not, even if it's not called direct provision, it's, mm. it's you know probably it's worse, you know. But I, I don't think that there's any you know reason for all of that. I I just think that humanity now. This is you know me, me going a little bit deeper. It's mm. just kind of like um, you know want this heart of we have to be we have to protect ourselves from certain people we have to be this way we have to put this barrier we have to do all of those things and yet with all the barriers and everything that's just it's not solving the situation yeah. you know it's actually making situations worse mm. you know um, but I don't I don't know why um, that should be the, 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 for the children it's 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 hard like I was um, I would say that in my case I was a bit lucky that we we left where mm. my daughter was still a bit young yeah. and I wasn't in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a hostel like the one yeah. you were describing in the first place so um, we, we kind of got out when she was a bit young no. but there were some like I would look into the eyes of some of them who were teenagers at the time you know you kind of you know that there's mm. something going on you yeah. know that something is just quite no you kind of you have a feel of these things mm. and you look at them and even though they none of i i never talked to any one of them in terms of hearing their stories or mm. what they, it was that was making them you know what challenges they would have been going through at the time but you can tell you know you can tell that you know all is not that parents were finding things difficult mm. as well as the teenagers were finding mm. things difficult because it's a world where children want to wear certain things or do certain things and everybody wants, you know, it's, it's a kind of like a very image conscious world. Mm. And then you're, you know, a, a mother or a, a parent or parents have to provide that within mm. that kind of, you know, um, environment. You have to, you know, match what is outside yeah. as well, it's just to make, you know, so it's, it's hard, it's difficult. And then, and I, you've touched upon this before, boredom. <laughs> like. It seems to me that it's, it's one of those things that kind of gets kind of gets dismissed as a sort of sort of glib kind of idea. But it must, at that extent, and that day after day trying to find things to do, again, it must have a, a real corrosive effect. I remember a friend of mine used to say this to me. She went in direct provision together, and she would say, "If you want to, uh, you know, about boredom, she would say, if you want to uh, tame an elephant, what do you do?'" You tether it to one particular spot, and after yeah. a while, it can wander past that, you know, that particular environment. And I think that that was just—it was almost like, a, a, you know, if you want to kind of clip the wings of someone mm. in terms of the not developmentally, or to, yeah. you know, kind of have a, 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 a you know, like a, almost like you're setting a glass ceiling for them, where you kind of you tether them for to a particular place for mm. a long time because you know and then they come out and you have all these kind of expectations of them they have to join the workforce yeah. they have to do this they have to do that they have to prove that they're doing this you know all of these mm. things and if only they can only do it for a while you know you can imagine if someone got into direct provision at the age of 30 they mm. leave 40 you know that's 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 yeah. that's a that's that's a whole like almost like that they're going yeah. downwards uh, and I don't know what they're supposed to produce after this yeah. this time you know so it's it's a difficult one boredom is a is a huge issue people find things you don't look at them and think they're bored mm. but it's just the repetitiousness of yeah. everything like they have to get up in the morning and do the same thing over and over again like you can almost do it in your yeah. in your sleep you know but people are busy if you ask them they're all busy mm. it's just uh, what are they busy doing but it seems to be that that's the thing you we ask people like you want people to be uh, productive members of society and yet you come into this system and the first thing as you say that happens is that that, that is kind of drained out of you yeah, by this yeah, by the system yeah, yeah. and then we're, they're let, when they finally are allowed to work in the system 
you don't know what the consequences of that you are. You don't, and uh, you have to try to uh, fit in with your colleagues, and those are just not the skills. You've been mm. 10 years where you're around probably a certain kind of people, you're, you're around a certain kind of behavior, you talk a certain kind of way, and then you have to go out and, you know, almost like put on a new persona, you know, yeah. and have to fit in and all of that. And some people succeed. Well, my, my issue is this, I, what I'm saying is people succeed in it, but after a while there comes a point where they stop, mm. and then it all comes, you like, it's almost like you're, you're beginning to feel everything all over mm. again. It's it always, you go out and you think, oh, I've got it all right. And, then, mm. and that's what I found out each and every time from the people that I know. There might be, there are so many people, like thousands that I'm not in contact with, but from the little people that I know, there always comes a point where it all, like almost like, the, you know, it, it kind of like weighs down mm. and everything has us, you know, coming down on the person and all of that. It might be for a little while and they get over it or something, but it does happen, you know. So. Mm. And in your case then, when you came out, like what was, again, I know you said that this book was when you really feel like a writer, but was that something, like you'd won, you'd won an award in, in 2008, for, as you said, for gathering thoughts, was that the that story? So was, that was the intention, that was what you wanted to do when you, when, with, your, with your life at that stage, was it? I don't know if, it, like, I, everybody will have a dream of, mm. you know, probably making it up, but I, I, I don't know if I ever thought that it would be, it would be feasible, you mm. know, I, especially because I, I kind of put out my story once or twice or so, and it was toned down, you mm. know, in terms of, oh, this is not the thing we're looking for, we're looking for this and all of that. So that kind of discouraged me, like, oh, there's nothing going to, but I was always, like, I kept writing and I, you know, I, would, I managed to publish some things into some anthologies. And if there's anything that's kind of about writers going on, anyway, I try to take part in that mm. and just do those things. And But I, I don't think that I I looked at, at it as something that would profit me yeah. in the end. Or, you know, like, oh, you know, I, I've always oh, won that. I, I, I even think that I'm, you know, whatever it is called, I, I don't believe in that thing, but imposter syndrome, even now, you know, like, oh, I'm not even, a, I'm just, posing as one, right. you know, I'm going to be, it's, you know, so it's, it's one of those things where even with the book published, I still don't feel that, you know. Yeah, but did you, and then, but you went back to, you started doing a PhD then, mm. when, when was that? Oh, this was in 2016. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I was just at that point where I didn't know what to do with myself, mm. you know, and um, when I don't know what to do, I might always go into like a study or something like yeah. that, study something, and uh yeah, I applied for it and, you know, they, they, they took me and, um, yes, but it was just based on somewhere that I found that I enjoyed going into, which was fighting words in Dublin, you know, mm. I, I have always, like, when I was in direct provision, I always went in there for, as a volunteer, yeah. to, you know, and I thought, okay, it'd be nice to kind of do, um, a case study of how they inspire children to write. That is, that's that's the Roddy Doyle, Glenn Hansard. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. It's just, it's just an amazing place. So what uh, do they do? They mentor children in writing. Mm -hmm. uh, if I say mentor children in writing, it's, it's like almost like they teach the children, but, but mm. it's just like a space for children to come yeah. in and write, you know, so it's, it's, uh, I, I just loved it. It's one of those things that you see and you say, oh, I wish I had this when I was, was yeah. younger. Yeah, you know, yeah. It would have, maybe, you know, I don't know where, but it's just one of those things that you say, you know, kind of wish, oh, you know, I love being mm -hmm. here. I always enjoy going in there. It's just a, a nice place. And so you were volunteering in there even before you did yeah, this? Yeah, I was. I was. I haven't been in mm. for quite mm. a while. No, I, I've been in to chat to the staff, but not as a volunteer. But yes, I, I used to go in there to, um, to volunteer. Yeah. And then the PhD came from... So from from, from that, that from the idea of yeah. that you know yes yes and that was just what I wanted to look at the the creative writing process that they use there for the mm. children how it impacts you know do they write do they, do they keep what what is it that it does to them that you know even when they leave fighting words do they continue writing yeah. you know what kind of barriers does it break for them and is there what are the barriers that they like do they keep writing is it something that a lot of them say they do yeah. keep, they, they do they continue writing yes um well hundred percent yeah. you know hundred percent response is they keep writing that's, that's and good. how important is the writing process for you is it like is it you know you say you suffer like the imposter syndrome but is it something you need to do uh, to kind of process your life or is it so, uh, as well as being something that you do to kind of as a career, if you know what I mean? 
Ah, uh, uh, the career thing is not even coming into it at right. all. Um, yeah, usually uh, I start off my writing almost like uh, if something happens that I'm usually almost from a place of rage, mm. really, you know, or anger, and I just pour it down on paper, and then I try, you know, kind of making it a bit much more, mm. you know, a bit nice so that somebody would be able to read it. But yeah, that's just where it's going. But, I, but recently, what I'm working on now, is just I'm just kind of curious about how things, you know, I'm just I, I, almost like I'm taking this look at life and I'm always almost digging deeper into yeah. life, almost kind of spiritually, mm -hmm. almost. And I'm thinking of how life re I, I, repeats itself, how we do things that if you look at yourself now and you kind of look back to your background, there are probably things that your father did yeah. that you found yourself doing even though you know without yeah. any kind of conscious thought about it or the things have repeated itself down the mm. family line or generational line yeah. so all of those things are just what is coming into these are just things that i'm looking at now i'm, I'm thinking a, a, almost like a deeper reflection at my own life just mm. to see you know even the things that we think we've escaped to have we really escaped yeah, them yeah it's funny we had tommy tiernan on the show and he was saying that that you know the the generational impact of things. Yeah. He was talking even about like the famine in Ireland. Mm. You know that gets there's gen, it takes generations for something as catastrophic as that to yes. to exit the system. You know <laughs> if you like, so that gets handed down from generation to generation, and we don't really realize that in ourselves that we are we can't escape not just our parents' lives but our grandparents' lives. I know. I, I like that somebody else <laughs> to say that as well because that's just one thing. Um, going on just kind of like uh, sometimes you just have to make a, almost like a conscious everyday effort mm. to not go back to those kind of patterns but it yeah. draws you you know so it's just something that I am um, exploring now just mm. looking at things and how do these things happen you know I I I was talking I think that came into my mind oh gosh I'm kind of I'm, I'm digressing now yeah, no 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 it's interesting <laughs> I was speaking to somebody I was speaking to this man, you know, we just kind of having a casual conversation. He's, he's an African man. He said, oh, I don't know what the topic of the, you know, conversation was. He said, my father used to beat my mother. Mm -hmm. And he said, my brother, you know, when he got married, he was beating his wife. Mm -hmm. And I made a conscious effort that I would not, you know, like I mm. saw these things and I said, I'm not going to do that. Mm. So I, I think we're just coming over, how do you break patterns, you yeah. know? And he said, I said, some, you have to, it's something that you have to be aware of at a young yeah. age and then you have to, you know, say, I'm not going to make this mistake mm. again. So it's almost, you know, like you have to make a conscious effort. And I said, thinking about it, you know, like how do we do that? And I, I, I reflected back on my own life and I saw that this And this do you kind think you generation. have broken the patterns? Because, you know, maybe as an observer, somebody who's slightly outside you're it's mm. you're more aware of the patterns you think you have broken the patterns of your well i th I, I try to like mm. the, if there's one person <laughs> I know this is not nice, but she probably knows. I don't want to be like, my daughter is like that as well. I don't want to be like, it's my mother, you know? <laughs> so sometimes when I start doing certain things and I realize, oh my God, yeah. I'm beginning to sound like my mom, yeah. I stop, you right. know? Like, so, so that's, it. So that's a, if that's yeah. a way of saying, oh, this is a conscious effort, then probably that is, that is it. My but you do find that. You find yeah, yourself, I do find yeah, that. Yeah, 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 you kind of start, you know, going that way as well. Yeah. But absolutely. everyone, that's a universal thing, isn't uh, it? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. That <laughs> sense you're becoming your parents <laughs> or trying not to become your parents. Well, some people are kind of like, they, they, they it's almost like, um, they, they love becoming their parents. Yeah. They, they love their parents. So, uh, not yeah. that I don't love my voice, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to, you know. There's so many, it's, um, it's something know. that I try to make a conscious effort not to. And where do you see yourself as a as a writer and as a person in five years? Well, for me, I would just love to um, write more. Mm. I think what is stopping me from writing is that I think with the book, you, you kind of become more conscious of how you write. Mm. In the past, I would have just written, you know, it doesn't matter what, how it comes, I'm just writing what is in my heart. But yeah. now I think I stop myself, I over-edit myself now. So I want to stop all those things and just be able to write. Write so many. There's so many stories in my head that I want to write down, mm. and just keep going in that sense. I don't know what would become of the books and all, all that kind of thing. But for me, it's just that having that pay, that peace, mm. you know, of existence. Like I, 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 I seek peace so much. It's just right. such a, a necessity for me. It's almost like the air I breathe. So mm. just to have that peace to 
to write or to do things that I, I love doing, just to be, you know, that's just what I do. And is there a difference between peace and the solitude you get from writing and maybe the loneliness there is in somewhere like you know, direct provision, which even though there's lots of people around, it must be mm. a very isolating existence. It was, and nobody paid any attention. Like even with the book, uh, sometimes I'm with my friends, but it's like their lives are removed from it, which I yeah. enjoy because they're not focusing on, on, on the book, on the things and all of that. And even if they are, it's just to tease me about it, like, you know, uh, so. I like that. So in a, in, in a sense, I was in, with a group of people, but I was kind of isolated, mm. right? And I think the curiosity is coming more from the from the non-African uh, communities right. as yeah, opposed yeah. from the African yeah. communities. Like, they just, you know, they feel that, you know, after a while, it's just going to, it's a passing phase mm. to them. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what well, I just, I, I just want to, almost like all of the above, the solitude, the, 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 mm. the, 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 the isolation, everything, if I can afford it, just, be somewhere yeah. where I, I get away from people and then just do my writing and then come back in. And, the, and you've, does it frustrate you that you have to talk about direct provision, that you know, even when you come on here, uh, you know, the, some of the questions I ask you, I can tell that there, it's <laughs> like you, you are seeing, you know, you, that people will want to look to you for answers or, or an insight when it's, you know, it's, it's not, as you say, it's not for you to kind of, provide the solutions? Um, I think it depends on the question. Mm. It's usually not every question that I feel that mm. way about. I think I, um, I'm kind of like I'm almost I'm at a, a very sensitive part, you know, mm. time in my life, you know, and uh, that probably, it's, it's not, um, it, it, talking about direct provision is just something I've always, you know, I don't have any qualms about doing, mm. you know. I remember leaving, when we were leaving direct provision or when we talked about how it would be if we left direct provision and some, a lot of my friends would say, oh, if I leave this place, oh God, I'm never coming back. Like, I, you know, I don't even want my children to remember, you know, all of this. And I've always been of the opinion that I would want to remember. You know, I want to remember. I want my child to remember. I want to pass the place and say, this was where we lived. Like I wanted to keep that, you know. And so it's not something that I, yeah, go on. No, 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 no. Go on. No, keep. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 something that I don't mind talking about, but I I but I don't want to be the one, the the voice for other people. Yeah. Everybody had different experiences, and I think that other people should be heard as well. You know, mm. I probably have the completely different experience from the person that was next door mm. to me, who you know, life must have been. You know, everybody just had different experiences, and I think I don't want to be speaking about it and making it sound like uh, it was just how it was for mm. me, that was how it was for other people. And I'm just conscious of that, that I don't want to be put in that position where I become the voice for uh, people who were or mm. who are still in that provision. And why do you want to remember? Is it because you want to, rem you want to let people, you know, let your daughter know, let just, this is what we went through, or is it just because you feel a life is best, better understood if you, if you remember the stages you've gone through? I think life is better understood if I remember the stages we've gone through. I, 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 have a, I have a problem with people who want to, you know, hide something or hide the past. I have a problem with, not people, but I have a problem with that kind of thing. You know, it's just something, everything has to be remember. Like, at least you have to keep the memory alive mm. somehow. I think it, it, that's what it, it, I think in a way, if this is the future much more positively than when you try to, you know, cover it up or not to remember it at all you know I don't I don't um, subscribe to that do you think taken down will make a difference to people's perception of direct provision I don't know if you've seen it I haven't no. <laughs> I was we we're just having this um, discussion the other day with, uh, with some friends about, like I said I've just become so incredibly sensitive that I yeah. am just almost conscious of things that I, I, I bring to to the floor to my you mm. know um, but I was I, a friend of mine was talking about it you know mm. and she said oh you have to watch it and but they kind of have a problem they said it's given a bad perception to Nigeria uh, right. Nigerians and all of this I've not I've not seen it so mm. I don't know what the you know the 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 theme and all of the mm. the plot of the stories. I have to watch it now. But they were coming from that. Oh, it's not giving. We're having a bad time already to okay. add something that is going to give us a, 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 a worse image. Or mm. you know, like uh, someone actually the, the the friend I was talking about said uh, um, a friend of ours that is working in a particular place mm. was walked in while her colleagues were discussing taking down, and they stopped talking. 
And she said, why would that be so, you know, yeah. why would they suddenly, it's, it's a program, it's a TV show, mm. you know, why would they suddenly stop their conversation when she walked into the room and she felt it's just because she was, you know, she's adding it all yeah. together. We don't know why, but she's feeling it's because she's Nigerian and they're probably saying, no, Nigerians are like that. But, mm. So I don't know, but I have to watch it to be able to make that call for myself to understand what is going on. And is that an ongoing thing that you feel that uh, there is a sense of, like, people struggling, like, sort of, whether it's, it's casual racism or whatever it is, just that sense of not uh, people sort of being uncomfortable or not knowing, as you say, not wanting, you know, feeling slightly unsure of themselves or how they should respond. Is that something that you become very aware of here? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, there is um, casual racism. Mm. And, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the danger of that is that almost that uh, people are not even... Uh, I would say that people are, I would even say that they are conscious of it or something right. like that. You know, sometimes you meet someone who doesn't know what they're saying mm. and, and you don't, you, you're kind of, they're just talking. Yeah. And you might find someone probably will say, oh, I saw uh, a, a, a woman's headscarf or something. I saw mm. a Nigerian woman's headscarf mm. or someone was saying a headscarf and I was just going, and you see somebody, you know, they're just describing something. Yeah. And you see someone probably kick them. What was that kicking about? You know, yeah. don't say that. But, you know, you that you understand the other person or whoever is describing a headscarf that, you know, is, he's just talking, you mm. know. Who, the person kicking now is showing casual race. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? They yeah. think they are correcting someone, but that's like, why mm. are you stopping him from expressing yeah. himself? You know, that, that yeah. I, 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 does that make sense, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's all those little things that you're wondering, why did you mm. do that? Why can't, why can't we talk to each other? Yeah. You know, why can't we, why can't I, make fun of something and then you make fun of something about me. Yeah. Why do we have to do all these things where we're, you know, we're always conscious of things mm. and, and those are the little things that, you know, that happen that makes you unsure. Like, yeah. what, you know, you become uncomfortable if you're there like, oh my God, you know, shouldn't I, maybe I should walk away. You, yeah. you, it, it, it's these things that make you uncomfortable as to how to react when people stop talking or when they're conscious of it, you know, like, or where they, they say certain things that, you know, like, I, I think people who are, racism is a funny one. <laughs> and mm. to be honest, I never noticed racism or I never thought I was black until I got here. Right. You know, I never, yeah. you know, saw myself as someone who was mm. different from any other person until, you know, I got here. And uh, it's, it's, it's a funny one. It's a funny one. In what way? Uh, <laughs> Because it, 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 it takes, it is a whole new conversation mm. altogether. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a whole new conversation. It's just how, is in people's um, behavior, is in, is in the thinking, you mm. know, like, uh, and um, it, it, it's, it's hard because sometimes people don't even know that mm. they are, uh, and you know when someone, you know, the thing about being a black person mm. or whatever, let me say that now, is, uh, you know when someone is not, is, is, is doing things, something, saying something unconsciously, mm. and you tend to know when they know what they're doing, but yeah, they yeah. do it anyway, you know, like, uh, yeah. And do you think, like, you, you touched on it earlier that, uh, around the world, these these kind of views are kind of you know you look at Britain, you look at America, like you know, look at Trump, these kind of things. Is there a chance for Ireland to kind of learn from places like that in the sense of doing being, making it be, doing it better, like making people more welcome, making realizing as you say that it doesn't work for anybody the other way. I don't think on a governmental level, there's much more that they can do. I think mm. all of these things is kind of like a personal level. Yeah. You know, I, I think the government of Ireland are doing, like, they're, I don't have a, any mm. issue there, yeah. you know. I, I think when things come up, you know, we always say the government, the yeah. government, the government. But I think it's this, these are things that it's, it's a personal mm. thing. And sometimes what I, what I find is that when people do things that cutsy, simple cutsy that you mm. give to everybody. If they give it to somebody like myself, mm -hmm. like I'm expected to jump up and down and right. like, oh, be so grateful that I probably walked into a shop and the, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the guy behind the, the till smiled at me or served me mm. in the way that, or manner that he should have served me in the first place, you know? Yeah. So I, you know, it's all these little things that you're like, why should I, you know, almost be grateful for that kind of behavior when it's mm. something that I should have, you know, yeah. with, as a customer, that is, you know, I'm, I'm entitled mm. to that, or every customer that walks in should get that kind of service, even if you're 
child mm. or an adult is the same kind of, you know, customer service. That's what it's about. But it's almost like you're expected when you're giving those little, you're expected to be grateful for them. Mm. And it's just simple courtesy. So I think that that's where the difference is. So I think it's a personal thing. I think it's a, it's a human to human thing mm. as opposed to probably on a governmental level. Yeah. I, 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 you know, like if I say, well, what is happening in America, what is happening here, I'm kind of taking it a bit because I don't think any government can make any way. Yeah. But it doesn't matter what, what promises they make, you know, mm. they're just going to come in and probably recycle this all the whole thing. But I think on a personal level, we can make each other feel better or make each other, you know, we can be nicer mm. to each other, we can be kinder to each other if we want to be. So it's just whichever way, where, which way do you want to go? I think that's all, that's where the difference is. How do we make people nicer to each other? It's just, it's just simple being, mm. being, being yeah. kind, being conscious. Yeah. How, how would you like to be treated? Yeah. It's just, that's just a simple thing. Mm. How would you like to be treated? Would you like to be, you know, w would you like for someone to, if, if I read something about you, a comment about mm. you online, would you like me to walk in here and react to that mm. comment mm. when I, you know, I go like, you know, yeah. to you? Or would you like me to be, to just kind of understand, like, take what I got from you here as my own judgment of you, mm. as opposed to judging you mm. based on something that, I, it's, it's just those little things yeah. that we have to uh, analyze in our mind and react to as, as opposed to anything else, I think. Sorry, I'm going like that no, no, when no. I get that way. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I'm becoming too passionate. No, yeah. no, it's great. <laughs> Look, Milady, that's been wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.